All right, hey guys, this is Chris, and today we are going to uh, just do a quick video on, I always say quick video, but it never is, but we're going to do a video for battery management, and um, we're using the Xenos as an example, but this applies to any multi-cell LiPo or uh, high-voltage LiPo, so uh, there's always a lot of talk here lately of the Xeno batteries. They are, don't have a real li long lifespan depending on how long you fly, about a year on average is when they really start to show signs. Uh, if you fly a whole lot, they're gonna show signs quicker than that, and that's because it's it's a three cell, and that center cell uh, gets the most heat, and it depletes faster uh, as far as its lifespan goes. So I'm just gonna show you a basic battery manage, ma ma management that I practice. And uh, it has not let me down. You haven't seen my Xeno fall out of the sky. Uh, and I'm not being cocky. But as long as I do this, I feel very confident to say you will never see my Xeno fall out of the sky or hear me say, hey guys, today my Xeno fell out of the sky. Uh, unless an ESC failed or a motor failed. But it's not going to be because of a bad battery. <clears throat> and um, I've already had one that's been bad. Uh, so I discharged it fully and then, uh, pitched it. So I don't have that battery to show you. I originally was not planning on making a video cause I didn't know that this was going to be a big problem for the Xeno. But what we have, we have the Xeno cable and I've got two different ones. This is from the very original. And then they started realizing, Hey, we got a problem here. And they made it thicker. So if you look at these, you'll see. Are we in camera? Sorry, I can't see the camera. One is thicker. And you can tell how flimsy this one is versus this one. It's stiffer. So it doesn't flop around. This one's just much thinner. So, and I've got my balance lead here that I made. Uh, it's 20 gauge wire. It never warms up. And this one doesn't warm up either. For the Xeno battery, you'd want to charge it 3 amps. You can't do that with this cable here. You can go 1.5, maybe 2 amps, and it starts warming up. This one here, I can usually go 3 amps and it doesn't warm up on me. If I'm charging multiple batteries back to back, I'd want to go about 2.5 just to be safe. But we're going to go ahead and use this one. And then we'll plug in this battery here. Now, I don't have any that are real bad or anything. There's Some of them are starting to show a little sign. Uh, this one would be one of my older ones, so it might be showing some signs. But right here we've got it at 3 amps. And like I said, you know, you want to charge it less if you have a thinner uh, lead. So you definitely want to hold it after it's been charging a little while. Put your hand on it and see if it warms up. If it warms up, you need to drop that amperage because you don't want to fry that cable and have a house fire. And I should also say, monitor your batteries while they're charging. Stay here with them while they're charging. Don't, don't leave the house or anything like that. So... Now, this is the IMAX B6 AC version 2. You don't have to have this charger, but you definitely want to upgrade your charger. You don't want to stick with that Hubson charger. That's not a balanced charger. So, the main reason for something like this is you want to be able to also monitor your cells. Uh, some people like to test the resistance and all that, but really all you need to do is monitor your cells. Your first sign of any problem is reduced flight time. So if you start getting reduced flight time, there's your first red flag right there. Now, you can have cold weather, high winds, things like that that are gonna reduce your flight time. But you know your quad. You fly it regularly and you normally get 20 minutes and then every single time you fly on this battery, you're only getting 10 minutes. And then this one you're getting 17, 18 minutes regularly. This one's starting to show a sign if that's the case. So we have it set for high voltage LiPo. 
3S, 11.4 volts, 3 amps, and then we're going to press start and hold it, let go, confirm with enter. It just says warning because it's a high voltage LiPo. If you had a regular LiPo, you'd overcharge it. So it's going to start charging. And in the very beginning, this usually will show that my cells are further off than they actually are. So you press this button right here. And they're not too bad. That center one's always going to be the lower one uh, on your Xeno batteries. So it doesn't take long for that one to drop down more than the others. But what you want to do is you want to let it wait a little bit. When you first turn it on and hit that, it's always going to be off. Sometimes it's, it looks far off and you might think there's a problem. You want to wait and let it charge a little bit. So we're at 40 seconds. Let's come back after a couple minutes and then we'll see how it is. Okay, so we are now at three minutes. So it's been on here for three minutes and I'm just going to check the cells. 415, 408, 413. So that's not bad. It's still about the same drop in the center, but that's not bad. Um, if we were considerably, oops, if we were considerably low on that center one, you know, like 390, then that's when you want to start paying more attention to your battery. So that's not bad where I'm at right now. So that's each cell. And that's perfectly fine. You can have a brand new battery reading just like this. So that's, that's perfectly fine. So another thing you can do is checking your resistance. Now your resistance is going to kind of vary based on your lead, uh, you know, the thickness of your wires. So I, I usually, in the very beginning, have been using this. And I noticed my resistance was pretty far off and it looked like it was really bad. Uh, but now that they've got this thicker cable, I've noticed it's balanced out some, but sometimes it's, it's not. So how consistent that is on this charger, I don't know, but, uh, what you do is let's stop it. So we're going to go through here, battery resistance, let's check in the battery and it says 41, 9 and 35. That center one's reading the best. So 41, 9, and 35. So we're going to stop it. But those are good numbers. That's not bad. You don't want to be like way over, you know, way over 100. So we're going to unplug this. And let's just see what the thinner cable tells us. See if it's any different. Checking. So still, we're not bad. It is higher, 84, 74, but still that's not bad, but it does show you the difference. So remember, 84 and 74, go back to the other cable. And then we're down about half, 40, 12, and 35. So that just basically shows you the difference in thickness of cable. You're going to get a different resistance reading. So we got a higher resistance with the thinner and we got a lower with the thicker. Now it doesn't matter if you get a higher or a lower really with between the two, as long as you're seeing some sort of consistency, this may look like a big number, but it really is not pretty typical for the center cell actually. So let's just check some of these other batteries real quick. And checking the resistance, it's not even something I really do. So 41, 12, 39. <clears throat> we'll stick with this, this cable and then we'll go to the other cable. 42, 10, 38. So they're all turning out to be about the same. I've got two new and two old batteries here. 43, 11, and 39. So <clears throat> that's all very normal for this battery. Now let's go to 
the thinner one. And it should read higher, but still it's not gonna be a red flag or an alarm. 73, 11, 77. So it's consistent as far as showing uh, the two outer cells and the center cell being more resistance. And my center cell is going to be, oops, my center cell is going to be the weaker probably on every battery, even my new batteries. Seventy four eleven seventy four. That's good. Seventy four twelve seventy five. And we already did that one. So, so <clears throat> that's checking the resistance. But like I said, let's put a newer battery on here. Like I said, that's something I really do not do. Um. 72, 12, 76, okay. So let's go back to the high voltage battery and that's, we're gonna balance it, same settings. Now I've got the thinner cable on here. So I obviously would not charge at this, I would charge at a lower rate, but just because I'm right here, we're gonna go ahead and do it. Confirm, go ahead, and then let it charge for a little while, and then check your cells, 382, 379, I'll see how they're jumping around. You got to let it, let it go for a little bit and kind of, kind of figure itself out here. We'll wait a little bit. But while we're, while we're waiting, I just want to repeat, your first red flag is going to be shorter flight time, a consistent shorter flight, flight time. Again, you're flying on this battery and getting the normal flight time, and then say this battery is consistently giving you half of that. This one's what, what you got to start looking out for and be smart and don't wait for it to go too far and fall out of the sky. So when you see that center cell drop dramatically, then that's a red flag or your resistance shoots up, that's a red flag. But your first red flag is definitely going to be reduced flight time and then charging or checking your cells. Now you can get these little cell meters. I don't have one down here with me, I, I apologize, but plugging a cell meter into your battery after it's fully charged, it's going to show you that the battery is balanced. When you're fully charged and you check your cells here, it's going to show you you're fully balanced. The important thing is checking your cells while it's charging. That's when it's going to show you a problem. So I could have a bad battery, let it fully charge, and a lot of the times it'll show that it's pretty well balanced all the way across when it's not that center cell will drop so fast and then you risk having your quad cut off and uh, fall out of the sky. So that's why you want to watch it while it's charging. 407, 390, 410. So that is not bad. That lower number in the center, that's, that would need to be considerably lower for me to be concerned. So having, uh, Having to check this throughout the whole charge? No, you don't need to. Uh, typically, you know, you're going to have about an hour, hour and a half charge on your batteries, depending on size. And maybe check it a quarter of the way, half of the way, something like that. You maybe check it twice. And that'll give you enough to tell you, hey, something's going on here. So checking it this early on is not really something that's necessary. If I would wait like 15 minutes and check it, uh, that's, that, that's a good time to check it. So right now we're running about the same.
but let's say let's say we're you know a half hour into this halfway through like right now we are 69 percent so let's wait for that to clear out so you know let's say we've been charging for half an hour check the cells for 409 411 and let's say this is down to like 375 that's when you that's when you got a red flag that okay we definitely got something going on here with one of the cells so that's pretty much it so i can feel this getting warm i was looking for my uh my laser pointer to tell the temperature of this but now we're at seven minutes this is actually getting warm so i would not charge with that cable at three amps we would have to drop that down to like two amps to be safe so looking at the cells one more time 409 493 411 that's all within a good close range of each other so that's pretty much it we can throw another one on there just to see we'll do this one And this one's at 30%, so it's low right now. It's jumping up. You kind of want to go when this settles down a little bit. Like in the beginning, it's going to it's going to shoot up quicker. But once that settles down a little bit, that's when you want to check your cells and see how close they are. So 392, 385, 392. That's all good and close within each other. So my main point here is it's very simple just to pay attention to your flight times. Keep a flight log if you need to. Um, you know, put a number on your batteries and keep a flight log of that number and how much time you're getting. Um, I don't even do that anymore. Uh, I don't. I have some of them that I've numbered, but. Um, I just pay attention to my batteries. That's all I do. I pay attention to how much flight time I'm getting. If I'm getting a low flight time, I'll put a sticker on there and then uh, I'll keep an eye on that battery. But um, pay attention to your flight times. Know what you normally get, uh, you know, for the type of conditions you're flying in. And uh, then while you're charging, you want to check your cells while you're charging is the whole key if you wait till the end when you have a completely charged battery i'm repeating myself it's going to usually show you you're charged all the cells are equal but meanwhile you have a bad cell and it depletes quickly in flight and uh that could cause your your uh protection circuit to kick in Turn off the quad and it's going to fall from the sky. So anybody has a Xeno and you're flying and it just shuts off and falls, here's usually the culprit right here. So while you're charging, check your cells, look for a red flag, and it's always going to usually be that center one. You want to look for that one to be really low. So if that one's real low, then that's when you want to start paying attention. I don't have the magic number for you guys, uh, but just an example, 397, 395, if we're down to 370, start paying attention to that battery. That's all I can tell you. So it's real simple. Sorry guys, um, my camera cut off because I ran out of memory there. So uh, I need to edit this part in, but I wanted to show you a storage mode that you can do with this. So if you take four batteries, have them charged up, and you go out and you fly and you only use two of them, then you want to put the other two into a storage mode. Uh, usually I run the quad down about 25% on average. Uh, so a 25%, 30% is perfectly fine storage mode. Um, but right here we're in uh, our charge. So we want to just go to storage, L-I-H-V storage, 
and you don't want to do it at three amps. I always do that less. So we're going to go down to one amp. And the reason for that is this will get hot. So if I do it one amp, uh, it usually doesn't get, it just gets warm. So just click start. Same thing, confirm, warning, yes. And it starts discharging. So you can see there's the cells. We're at 51%. And then as it discharges, <clears throat> it goes down on this. Uh, it's, um, I'll go down to, I think, some, somewhere around like 30%. Um, generally, when I charge my batteries, I always fly them at least down to 25%. And I don't need to put it into a storage mode. But if you have full batteries, uh, you're going to want to put them in storage mode because if you fully charge a battery and let it set for a long period of time and you continue doing that, it's just going to swell and uh, it's going to be no good. So um, that's part of your battery management right there too. So uh, that right there, uh, practicing storage mode, that will help uh, the longevity of your battery as well. So. All right, I just wanted to get that part done since it got messed up in the video, and um, we'll uh, get back into uh, my closing, and um, that's it. So on to the next step. Get yourself one of these. Take this and throw it away. Get rid of it. Just throw it in the trash. It's, it's not a good balance charger. These three lights don't tell you any magic numbers like this does right here so that goes in the trash spend about 50 bucks get you a good hobby grade charger they have them for 25 bucks on different different models and different brands but if you see this one for 25 bucks and it doesn't look exactly like this then you're buying a clone this one usually runs you between $48 and $53, $54. Um, I've had this for probably two and a half years. It has not let me down. It's charged countless batteries. So uh, I got this back in the day of my 501s and uh, been using it ever since for different batteries and it has not let me down. So it's a good charger. It's tried, true and tested. And uh, it's one that I can highly recommend just because I've had success with it. And like I said, I've detected one battery going bad and let it get down to a certain ex certain point. And um, if I were a better person, better pilot, and you know, wrote notes, I could tell you exactly what that bad battery was doing as far as how low it was. But I don't remember. I just... Like I said, we don't need to turn it into a rocket science. You want to enjoy flying. This is quick and basic. You're charging it while you're charging it. Just go and check your cells. It's real simple. Okay. So that's pretty much it, guys. Um, I'm sure this will bring up a lot of, a lot of brain power in the comments. Um, you know, I know there's different things that that uh, can change your resistance and there's different ways to test your resistance with meters and rigging up different cables. Uh, there's all kinds of different things. I'm just showing you the most simple basic way with a decent charger to where you can still enjoy the hobby, not turn it into some crazy uh, task or job and uh, or the battery becomes a hobby of its own. Um, just keep it keep it simple as they say keep it simple stupid <laughs> so that's it that's how i do my battery management hasn't let me down uh when the day comes i'm making a video if my quad ever just cuts off and falls from the sky because of a battery i will certainly tell you guys hey i messed up but i can i feel very confident in saying that's not going to happen to me so if it does happen to you it's just because you're using a, a charger like the Hubson stock charger or you're simply not paying attention to your batteries um, you're not paying you're not doing any type of battery management so uh, if you've seen anybody out there that's on YouTube and they're flying their Zeno and they, they say it just you know fell out of the sky 
They weren't paying attention to their batteries. They did not know their batteries. And some people, it's just, you know, because they trust what a company gives you and thinks this is a good charger, but it really isn't. This is kind of just get you started. First few flights, get started with it, order that. While you're waiting for that, you can still use this. Then once you get this, throw that thing away. Don't even use it for backup. That's just my opinion. So thank you very much for watching. Hit that thumbs up on your way out. And uh, as always, if you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button and hit the bell for future content. And we'll catch you on the next video. Take care.